Hello everyone and welcome to Sinful Gaming. I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're all staying safe, and most of all, I hope you're all fighting that war against the grey. Today's video, we're going to do something for beginner hobbyists. Uh, so for anyone getting into the Warhammer tabletop wargaming hobby, this video, I hope, is a little bit helpful to you. Today, I'm going to talk about 10 hobby tools everyone needs when starting out. Now, some of these are definitely more advanced, and some of these are much more necessary and more obvious than the others, but I think every single one of the ones I've put into this list of 10 is something you should consider getting at least early on in your hobby, as it'll give you a great tool to use in various different things. So, with that all said, we're going to get cracking on. We've got a list of 10 different things I want to talk about, and what exactly they are used for, and what we need them for in the hobby. Number one, this is a pretty simple, and I promise they're all not as basic and simple as this, but we've got to start with this sort of stuff to get us into the rest of the stuff that I want to talk about. Number one, clippers, hobby cutters. These are important. These get your models off the sprue, especially with uh, Games Workshop having so many more plastic miniatures attached to sprue. There's very little metal models that don't require these, and even then, a lot of metal models have flash and stuff that can be removed with these easily as well. Um, just... This should be your first buyer to get your first set of models. This is one of the most important things you're ever going to buy. Um, now, Citadel do have their own brand of these. There are much cheaper options. You can go to a $2 store uh, and find a pair of these um, quite easily. Number two, super glue and plastic cement. Now, super glue is super glue. I do have some people that like Loctite, uh, which is a bit more jelly of a super glue, but I generally just use, you know, uh, something like Quick Fix or a general $2 store super glue I can find anywhere. Most of them will do the job pretty well for metal, resin, and uh, bonding different, uh, different materials together. However, it is important when you get plastic models that you go look out and get some plastic glue or plastic cement. For me, this is so much better. This, what it does is effectively melts slightly the two models, so you do need to be careful when using this not to get it on high detail parts and to use the right amounts, but it bonds the models so much stronger together than super glue ever could. Um, plastic cement is definitely the way to go when building plastic miniatures. Like I said, you just need to be careful with application. There are ones like Citadel and there's some other brands as well that have cool little pins in the nozzle that make application really easy for this. Number three, paint brushes. Well, we're going to want to paint those miniatures eventually, so paint brushes are, you know, the next logical step to sort of take for miniatures. Now, there are so many different types of paint brushes, and I could do a video all on their own talking about paint brushes, and maybe I will down the line. However, um, I recommend just grabbing something like a standard brush. Most things will have something called a regiment brush, like from Army Painter, or a standard brush from Games Workshop, Citadel, um... And, you know, getting a brush appropriate to the size of miniature, enough to put down some color on your model. And then you can look into things like fine details, dry brushes, wash brushes, and all of that sort of stuff um, later down the line. But definitely having a look at brushes uh, is a really good way to go. This will be one of those things where you'll have so many different opinions on. I know so many people like so many different brushes. For me... I think it is important that you find a brush that you like. While someone else might claim that this brush is the best brush in the world, it's important that you feel comfortable not only um, with the brush, but using it as well. Um, how does it feel in your hand? Can you do this for longer periods of time? All of that sort of stuff. Number four, a wet palette. Now, this is one of those ones that I think everyone's a little bit iffy on, and I was when I first got into the hobby as well, but I think a wet palette is fantastic, especially if you're in a country like me, Australia, where our summers are incredibly hot. Uh, what this does is this keeps your paint wet. Uh, you can put a lid back on it and come back and use your paint again later at another time. Um, so this allows you to take more paint out your pot, stop yourself having to go into your pot or putting out more drops, stops it drying out when it's on your palette. Um, really, really useful for just keeping more of your paint usable. Not only that, but uh, wet palettes are really good for longer painting sessions as well. When you are painting for longer periods of time, doing, you know, like a lot of base coating, you can put down a large amount of the paint on the palette, not have to worry about it drying out, not have to be retaking out paint out of pot or a dropper bottle. Really is a absolutely fantastic tool that I recommend everyone gets at one. Number five, a cutting mat or a hobby mat. Something, now it doesn't have to be, you know, something like the Army Painters one I've got pictured here. Um, it can be, you know, as simple as a placemat. 
uh, or something like that that you've picked up at a $2 shop. But a cutting mat, hobby mat is really important. One, it'll stop someone else getting angry that you spilt paint all over their kitchen table um, or something else. It'll keep your area nice and neat. It won't make when you're doing uh, chopping and cutting and all that. It won't allow you to put dents in the table. You have this going on something else. It just keeps whatever you're using nice and neat. Um, and can, a nice thing about them as well is I find I keep myself neat. When I've got this big desk to work on, I find I spread things out everywhere. When I've got the hobby mat in front of me, I find that you know I maintain everything keeping too close knit to that hobby mat. It just keeps my area that little bit neater. Number six, a hobby knife. Now, um, this could be, you know, something like this that uh, has a sort of replaceable blade. Or many times I just use something with a retractable blade, like a exacto knife. Uh, you know, one that's smaller. You don't want, obviously, a massive one when using this. You're using it for very fine sort of things. Uh, generally, what these are used for is removing, like, uh, harder bits of sprue that you sort of can't get quite close enough with your clippers. Um, scraping as well, uh, removing hands and cutting little bits and digits around, or indeed, you know, making uh, incisions into something like bases or stuff like that as well can be really useful for as well. But I think this is a really good tool. Obviously, be very careful whenever you're using a hobby knife. Make sure you keep uh, bits and pieces of it safe. Always remember, um, you know, never leave them sticking up in a paintbrush pot. Uh, many a time I have seen people uh, stab themselves with hobby knives as a chef. The amount of times I see bad hobby knife um, etiquette or usage uh, makes me cringe. Number seven, and I'll admit, when I first got into the hobby, I thought this was one of those items that they made, you know, to sort of try and sell you, like that paint pot stopper or like a spray stick and stuff like that that Games Workshop have done. But mold line removers, I will say, are one of the best hobby tools I have available. So their big thing, they generally remove mold lines. Now you can do this with a hobby knife. However, the mold line remover is flat, so it's not going to cut it's going to scrape the mold lines off rubbing against them and it's also generally got sometimes files on the side as well what this means is you're less likely to damage your miniatures this is really good for high detailed miniatures or for miniatures uh, that are made of a softer material sometimes some resins and stuff like that um, I find these as a really useful tool and like I said I admit when I first started I thought these were one of those sort of faffy items but they definitely are a really useful tool to have. You can find cheaper alternatives than the Citadel variation around from other companies or indeed uh, hobby and craft stores have them as well. Number eight, a mini drill or hobby drill. These are really, really useful. So the main thing these are going to be used for is something called pinning. Pinning generally is going to be appropriate when you've got larger models made of heavier materials and generally non-plastic models. So things like resin and metal. This allows you to drill little holes in either side and put what's called a pin, which could be something like a piece of paper clip um, inside or a piece of uh, metal of some variation. And it just allows you to make a stronger bond for the model. You effectively put, you know, like a dowel, like you would in any woodworking scenario. Um, a really useful tool to have available, especially when you're doing things that aren't in plastic. Number nine, the hobby saw. Now, this is definitely not one of the most necessary tools if you're dealing with mostly GW plastics. You generally don't need this. But dealing with things like Forge World resins or other companies that have miniatures as well, hobby saws can be really useful. This is generally what you want to use when something is too big to simply just press with your uh, hobby knife and cut. You want to use something like this. This is a much safer way to grab a hobby saw hold the model or you know put the model in a vice or something that can hold it and use a saw to do that cut um trying to do you know large pieces with a hobby knife at least them breaking i've seen many a dangerous thing happen uh with hobby knives um over my years of people shattering them almost getting themselves in the eye with broken shards of hobby blade hobby saws get rid of that you've got to obviously be careful you're using a saw all of that but a much safer tool to use when you're dealing with larger bits and pieces of models. And number 10, a paint handle. For me, this is one of the most useful tools. I am a chef in my day job, uh, and carpal tunnel is something I definitely deal with, or cramps in my hands and pains in my hand, my forearm, and stuff like that. 
Um, paint handles are really good for allowing you to hold a model much more comfortable. Now, it doesn't have to be something fancy like you see here with the GW Citadel one. Um, it could easily be, you know, an old paint pot, um, a piece of corpse bottle top, uh, or something of similar sort of size. Stick your model on with some blue tack or a pin or something and use this. It will allow you to paint for much longer periods of time with much less or no pain at all. Um, for me, these are just really good for large, long painting sessions, especially with single miniatures. Really do help. Um, it's much more comfortable than holding you know, a model by the base. But that is our list of 10. If you've got any hobby items you would recommend uh, and hobby tools down in the comments below, please leave them down there and let us know what you think. And so that is the end of the video. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and drop a comment down below and let us know what you enjoyed about the video. If you'd like to come chat more with me and other members of our little community here at Sinful Gaming, we've got a link to our Discord server down in the video's description. And if you'd like to help support the channel in another way, you can do so either by joining Patreon or YouTube members or purchasing something from our Kofi web store. All of them are linked in the video's description. Thank you all for everyone who chooses to help support the channel. As a special thank you to those people who have supported via Patreon and YouTube members, we'd like to give a special shout out to them all. So a shout out to our Patreons, Christian Weir, James, Soren, Greenskins Gaming, AJC, Kenny Lowell, Aller and Shop First, Andrew Bowen, Nathan Fee, The Rising Ape, Cure Dynamic, Agu, Anthony B, Anton Nielsen, JJ Austrian, Average Wargamer, Domir, Mark Harvey, James Cater, Dinah226, Derek, and GRP390. A special thank you to our YouTube members, Greenroots Gaming, Kenton Young, Chris Wallace, Ronya, Vinny, Lock Lorik, The Johnny84, David Ellsworth, Revenar, Wolfric Nick, Broken Chef, Ariana Edwards, Sean Scott, Pink Nico Fire, and Robin Mankiller as well. Lastly, a special shout out, first of all, to Lady Witchfox Art, who does all the amazing artwork for the channel you see, and to X Morphic, who has done an amazing job at setting up our Discord server for her and making us have a nice place to content and to chat with all of our community. Thank you all for watching. Once again, everyone, stay safe, stay well, and most of all, keep fighting that war against the great. Ciao for now.